Hi there, beautiful souls watching. Thank you and welcome. I'm Gabrielle, retired medium in Germany, and I like to share some of my otherworldly experiences and insights. So this one is about the old saying that was written about the entrance of the temple in Delphi, Greece, kind of an initiation place, and there was written, Know thyself. Well, it means you have to know that you have a soul, or better said, it's the other way round. The soul has you, <laughs> and you also have to know this, your body, your mind, how you are functioning as a human being, how your brain works and things like that. So know yourself is a much bigger thing than we might think because it includes much more than just what you think about yourself. And you can easily trick yourself into thinking, I'm a spiritual person. I had clients like that, you know, just right from the beginning telling me that. And my experience showed me the ones shouting out the loudest, I am ready, I am this, I am that, I'm a spiritual person. In most cases, they are not. This is just the nice and shiny image they want to create and believe in for themselves or what the ego creates. So it's really a tricky kind of theme. <clears throat> but before I go more into that, I would like to address a few things because I already thought and more or less knew, not as a psychic medium, that's just common sense. I knew that my last video about uh, a glimpse, a sniff into one of my uh, spiritual mediumship cycles, circles, the training group, would cause uh, some questions and uh, some people just sitting on their couch and watching uh, the video would jump to the exercise with the envelope and maybe just guess or perceive but not on target. We had to cut out a few parts because they were too private, too personal or they could easily be abused by people not understanding uh, the full or the whole thing. So um, I have to say, before such a group starts, we always prepare. And preparation consciously is as important as the setting for a group like that, for a mediumship circle and for working with your psychic uh, skills, your psychic senses, your mediumship senses and abilities as the setting itself. Because you can't just enter there with your normal mind and then just play around. You have to prepare. If you're experienced, <clears throat> and train a little bit more, then you can reduce the time of preparation. But in the beginning, especially with new people in the group, I kind of prolong that to give a really deep and profound uh, step into entering a new or another state of consciousness and state of mind. We prepare via toning, which is three in one. It's a breathing exercise because while toning, um, you form the vowel precisely uh, according to the chakras. And we go from the lowest to the highest above, not the other way around or starting somewhere in the middle. That's like a ladder and you have to do it the right way. So you're breathing longer, you want to keep the uh, sound of the vocal, of the um, 
yeah maybe the R for the heart you want to keep that as long as possible so you are exhaling longer than you are inhaling and this already is a body signal for your vagus nerve to relax and let go of everything on your mind and it's also kind of boring your ego and your brain to death because there is nothing to understand, no words, no lyrics, no text like usually in music to ponder upon and just the ah and the o oh and the e is so boring that the brain just re uh, retracts and lets go. And second thing is you are vibrating. You are really doing something practically by creating that sound. You're vibrating your whole bodily system. So every cell in the body is vibrating. And as we are more than 70% water, which is a very good conductor for energy, have you ever tried to sing underwater, maybe in a pool or in the ocean? That's a very interesting experience. It's better in the pool because that's a contained environment, not like the wide open ocean. And you can feel that the vibration of the sound you create underwater comes back to you and does something with you. So you feel much more of an effect. And if you tone before starting using uh, psychic senses and training with them, you do a lot for your own bodily system. You kind of correct your chakra system, which might be a little bit off here and there. Because in our day-to-day -day lives, we can perceive if we are sensitive quite a few things but we are never focused with our attention it's just going from here to there oh i have to go to the grocery stop um, at four o'clock aunt uh, margie will call and things like that if you have all this on your mind you're not focused and you're not even consciously connected although we are always connected with our soul via our heart but consciously is a different thing. You walk around on your feet the whole day without being conscious of your feet. One of the exercises, for example, is to send the focus of your consciousness <clears throat> sorry, into your feet. And if you do that, best with closed eyes to not get distracted by the outside, uh, then you can start to feel and when you feel you cannot think because you're busy feeling you start to feel that kind of every cell in your foot is starting to vibrate you get a much more conscious sense of your feet the feeling that they are alive and that they are vibrating and you are really very aware of your feet so that's why preparation before uh, using your psychic senses in a mediumship circle is key and um, via toning or getting into the alpha meditative state you can create a different vibration in your whole field that prepares you to better perceive and use these uh, kind of psychic senses <clears throat> that are more or less just a prolongation of your usual six senses into the invisible realms all around you. And, um, well, that's uh, a common thing that uh, our mind, our brain, very often is faster than the feeling sense and then the soul in its movement. So it jumps ahead and it draws conclusions in the middle of a sentence. So it's missing out on the rest of the sentence because you're already galloping away with a thought. 
or a deduction. That's why in remote viewing you only get a target number. So you can't know anything and you can't even <clears throat> try to guess just with your mind because there is a difference between guessing and speculating and real perception with your psychic senses. So we have to get rid of the front loading and with a target number like in remote viewing you don't have anything. You just have numbers and you don't know where these numbers lead you to because usually kind of connected and under the number there is a phrased target like for instance there are targets on the internet available if you're interested in that and they just give you a number and then you have to prepare a little bit some of the remote viewers do that for half an hour 45 minutes or even one hour via meditating or listening to binaural beats to get out of the normal brain state so one hour preparation is quite a long time <laughs> And then they start to perceive what kind of information can they get via this number. And they can make a little kind of uh, sign with a pencil which is not constructed but just coming impulsively right after they heard the number and after they finished their preparation. You just make some kind of uh, circle or line or whatever, you know. And you can put your pencil onto special parts of this little drawing and get information from special parts of the whole target. And you want to get as much data and information as possible. So you use all your senses, you ask yourself, how does it feel? For instance, <clears throat> if you perceive a structure or a building, you want to find out how's the surface. Is it smooth or the contrary? You want to find out things like uh, how's the temperature? Is it cold or warm? And if you work with the opposites, then you can easily find out whether it's warm or cold because, uh, well, that's just natural. If you walk out of your house and it's a cold winter day, you just know and feel that without using your brain. So using your psychic senses is more or less very similar um, to remote viewing. And the best remote viewing results people get when they have the feeling, oh, I don't know what was that. I'm thinking I'm totally off and probably wrong. Because the ego wants to nail down everything and jumps to conclusions. And if it cannot do that, that is very uncomfortable for yourself. And you don't like that, that's because we jump to conclusions and false assumptions. And if you can endure that, that's mostly, in most cases, a very valuable session of remote viewing. But if you come out of a remote viewing session thinking, oh, I got it, I've nailed it, it's the Eiffel Tower or whatever, then you're probably off. And most people stop then with this because they only want success and they're not able to handle a no or a not yet and they always want to be uh, kind of the shiny ego that uh, got it all so this already goes into um, know thyself you know and not believe every of your own thoughts or your own feelings but try to get proof whether this is wrong, if it's cold, and if 10 people in one room say they feel cold, well, maybe it's really cold and you should just shut the window. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. And um, 
there are some other things. Uh, so I knew that some of you watching uh, the glimpse into my mediumship circle would sit on their couch watching and jump into the exercise, exercise without preparation and uh, just throw around th some things they got. But most of you who did that, and I uh, already answered some of uh, these uh, comments from you. But before I write of my fingers answering all of them, you know, it's not on target. The target was, in the envelope, was a paper with written language on it, with a black pencil. And it was a word, so whoever got letters or black writing, that's fine, that's good and on target, you know. And the feeling of joy that might be translated or deciphered within uh, some other images or imagery like uh, something you like and love, like the smell of a flower, which is kind of representative for joy as well. But this is kind of vague, you know. So um, I like these exercises, although my students don't like them. Uh, but it is good to learn to hone your discernment and your psychic skills. And not just jump to the first conclusion. Working with the first impression needs to be trained as well. So that was that. And there's another thing. I think I have to apologize to some of you, but you just come with your questions and you think you are the only one asking this question. Of course, that's normal. You are you and you only have the kind of uh, perception of yourself. But sensitive people or empath, they just can't help than thinking um, of others as well, you know. So if you would have a look at the comments, some of your questions are already answered there. And I am impatient. I have to admit that's one of my big character flaws. I know that. And I'm still doing my best to get better in that. But I'm impatient still. And maybe you can imagine that it's kind of annoying to get asked the same question again and again and again. And, um, well, first I tried to answer them, but after doing that uh, 20 times, I just get sucked and bored and annoyed and uh, impatient. And maybe I uh, do not answer them at all, or a little bit of that feeling is coming into the answer, and then you are pissed off. How can she answer that, like, uh, you know, with a little bit of anger or something like that? I never said that I'm a saint already. I'm a human person, like everyone. I get annoyed. I'm impatient. I have character flaws, and most of them, luckily, I already know and try to handle them. But please... If you just eat one of my videos that the algorithm or the YouTube feed or whatever is putting right in front of you and you're not able to click on the item icon below that video and go to my channel and have a look what's there. There are a lot of videos, a lot of stories, experiences and things I share for free to help seeking souls. Well, then I cannot do anything for you. So it happens that people only watch one video, uh, a channeling of the Elohim. And as the Elohim mentioned, my special meditation, how to go inside into your own inner sacred heart space where the connection to your soul is. And they said clearly in the video, it's on her YouTube channel. So below that video, I find 10 times the question, where is that video? And I have to ask myself, don't you have ears? Don't you listen? Um, 
unto the end of the sentence or what's happening with you and I get of course a bit annoyed so sorry for that I'm just a human being and my guides wanted me to share while I'm going while I'm not perfect and if I would be perfect although they already told me it's not about being perfect I think I wouldn't be here so as it is not about being perfect, what is it about then? My knowledge and experience and truth unto here up to today is it's about integrating. It's about integrating our shadow. It's about knowing our flaws, knowing ourself and relating that with uh, when we want to work spiritually in using our psychic senses to be aware of how our ego mind and our brain functions and that it always wants to jump to a con conclusion and things like that. So that was what I wanted to share before I go to the theme I announced in the beginning. And there is good help to find out more about this, you know, about the ego, the persona, the we, the I that you are and I am. So there is this very interesting um, thing coming from the Greek tradition. It's called the Enneagram, also called the Nine Faces of the Soul. These are kind of character studies and descriptions of nine different types of personas which are um, which are related to the numbers from one to nine. Because Enea from the Greek coming means nine and gram or grammar means the figure or the written. So the Enneagram, there are books and other things about that around in the internet is a very good method to find out more about yourself and to know yourself better. What is your basic uh, kind of ability with uh, what you incarnated here and came here to this world to try to navigate uh, through uh, the experience of life on earth and they are like in a circle these nine numbers are divided into three bigger parts that are regarding uh, kind of three types of brain or head and mind people they are coming from the head then three types of heart people that are coming from their heart and three types of kind of belly or gut feeling types that are coming from their belly and of course as we are all still living in duality and the whole universe is constructed in duality we have to experience the two poles there's also kind of the shadow side so um, the belly or gut feeling people they might get a lot of impressions and feelings but sometimes they're not yet able to focus on the important things and they're just a mess of feelings you know and uh, all very vague and uh, not very concrete and they can't uh, get a structure into that so that's maybe the path they have to follow and to learn to get this structured the feeling complex and the head people you can easily find out uh, people creating thousands of questions and after you answered one they already come up with the next one and the next one and the next one so they don't even give themselves the time to digest and ponder onto something 
This is just curiosity and will need will lead nowhere because if you don't digest the answer and create just a new question, then it's more or less good for nothing. The heart people from the Enneagram, they are the ones that are more kind of set up to bring these two, the head and the feeling, the belly and the mind together. But there are also some uh, kind of traps and uh, tricky features in that. Like you can be <clears throat> obsessed with uh, being right all the time and all the others are wrong. So you're choosing being right over love. And the theme of the heart is love, not excluding anyone or anything. So there's a lot to learn and I can only advise you, use the Enneagram. There are books out there and a lot of information about that in the internet, which can help you to know thyself better. And that will help you to handle yourself better as well as the persona, the ego that you are in this world. And the ego is not bad. It is for you a help to navigate through this world. So you don't have to kill it. You might overcome it, which is a good idea. But you have to know it first to overcome it, you know. And um, also astrology is doing a lot of good, not the ones from, uh, you know, the, the magazines telling you, oh, a nice thing will happen and come your path and blah, blah, blah. This is just too vague. I uh, delved a little bit into astrology and I will uh, take myself as an example. I am Scorpio in the sun sign, so this is with what I came. And the planet Mercury never moves very far away from your sun sign. So mostly, in most cases, your planet Mercury in your horoscope is close to the sun, means you have the same um, kind of basic you have as in your sun sign, also in your mind, your mindset. And as Scorpio is said to have a kind of a sharp brain, uh, I can confirm that because it does not even leave me alone. I have to question my own thoughts. I can't just lie to myself and I still have a conscious, a conscience. So I can feel as well as a sensitive and psychic when I'm off and when I'm wrong and I can't lie to myself. I know exactly when I did wrong and I can't find peace and rest uh, until I dealt with that. People who don't have a conscience or the voice of the conscience is so small that it's easy to be suppressed or overheard. They just go off with their ego and then they write comments like, I am this and I am that. I am the king of whatever planet or I am this angel. Uh, I'm a fire being. You know, to me, sorry, I come from evidential mediumship. I want proof and I don't believe my own thoughts. <laughs> And somebody kind of bragging like that, that smells to me like just a big inflated spiritual ego. And I just don't react to that. Sorry. If I uh, offend you with that, uh, then I apologize. That's my opinion. Of course, you can have your own and a different opinion. But that's what I learned. And I go with what I learned and what proved in my life up to now as really working. That's kind of the... The whole idea about evidential mediumship. You can say, I met this angel, I met that um, ascended master and believe that. And you don't even know whether it's just an image standing still or flickering like a Fata Morgana. You know, this uh, image that uh, is created with the flickering heat in a desert. 
real appearances, they move and they act and they show something. And I had to learn as well to ask appearances, who are you, what do you want, and ask them more questions to get more information. And then I wanted that to have backed up with my experience. So Saint Germain, who showed up in my mediumship circle, although I distrusted him, because I heard other channelers channeling something, naming itself Saint Germain, but it did not feel like an ascended master. It felt more like AI or maybe their higher self mimicking something. So you have to learn a lot to really get to discernment. And discernment isn't just there, you have to train it and to hone it. So, <clears throat> I wanted to share that the Enneagram is a very good tool to learn more about your earthen self, the persona, the ego, about yourself, to handle yourself better and maybe navigate better through uh, this material world. And then comes the knowledge of the soul, of the higher spiritual realms and everything else. And you can't in my opinion, take step two before step one, because you will be prey to imagination, to trickery. There are trickster beings that like to mimic as if they are an angel or whatever. So even Yeshua said in the Bible, as far as I remember, test the spirits that's why you have to ask them and you have to ask them to show proof and saint germain appearing in my mediumship circle well i could perceive a figure of light i could perceive his um, long robe he was wearing not special features like uh, hair face eyes that wasn't so clear, that was more vague. And he was showing by his actions and deeds what kind of a spirit he is. Because he was working on one of my circle members on the crown chakra and doing healing with white light. And I could feel the energy, I could see the light, I could feel the light. And I can assure you, a dark being or a trickster wouldn't do that. They would not work for the positive, for healing, maybe without even getting a thank you or whatever, or any result. Uh, some person in some mediumship circle or even a person in whatever circumstances. So really discernment is key and knowing yourself is key. This is what I wanted to share today and I share another thing which I just found out. I always, when I did my videos, I was kind of... Uh, well drawn to the screen I see in front of me and I see my uh, head there talking <laughs> and um, I was looking at that and I didn't know that I have to look a little bit more up to the little green light which is showing that the camera is on and would give you more of the impression that I'm looking at you and I'm not uh, um, kind of seemingly looking downwards with uh, half closed lids and things like that. So I'm learning while I go. I'm growing and learning while going and we all are. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching beautiful souls. Have a look at my comments, have a look at my YouTube page where I share a lot for free and you can use it if you like. And if not, well then, I wish you a good journey, everything is fine. <laughs> uh, have your own ways and find out whatever you want to find out. Thank you beautiful souls for watching, blessings, love and light onto your soul path. Bye.